We're inside today. It's uh, sunny South Florida, but it's not always sunny. We've taken inside. We're in Tamarack, Florida, a beautiful uh, community. One of the things I like about this city are the people. You go to the grocery and you can run into people and talk to them. They're very engaging. Uh, even go to the parks. Everybody's very engaging and really enjoy uh, meeting the people here in Tamarack. Also, it's a beautiful city. They've got plenty of plans for the future. It's not going to be the same uh, as it was yesterday. You look at it two years ago and it's grown. It's been beautified and they've got plans for the future. Just like God has plans for us. Uh, we're not the same that we were yesterday, uh, the way that we are today, and what we're going to be in the future. And I want to talk to you about who we are, our identity. I know we've talked about who we are in the past, but I want to talk about our identity and what the Lord wants for us now. You may have been in a church or invited to a church where there was a baby dedication. Uh, there was this church that I would frequent or this pastor, when he would do a baby dedication, he would remind us what a beautiful gift this child was, what a blessing uh, this child was from God. And uh, he would also point out the innocence of this child and how when we are raising them, we're really investing in them uh, in this innocent stage because as they progress, uh, this world that we live in tends to steal that um, or rob that child of that innocence. And I was reminded of that just recently because my identity was stolen. Somebody has my uh, all my information, my social security number. They were trying to open accounts in my name. I've taken the right precautions, but uh, uh, it's kind of unsettling to have the feeling that somebody has uh, taken something uh, that belongs to you and is going to either misrepresent it or use it for some evil purpose. And it's kind of uh, makes you wonder about your identity and what it means to have it taken from you or stolen. You kind of feel vulnerable. You feel helpless. Then the Lord reminded me that, uh, you know, you're much more than your credit score. Um, you're much more than what the world sees you as. It's uh, We've reached a point in my life, I had a good credit score, and I'm worried that somebody's going to affect that. I'm worried that I can't move forward in the future to do the things perhaps that I wanted to do. Um, he reminded me that that's not what makes me. Uh, it's not my credit score. Some cases it might not be what you do, uh, the relationship that you're in. Uh, he created us in this beautiful uh, state for a purpose. You started out in a place with the Lord. We've talked about it before. He created you to be here. And as we walk through life, uh, sometimes we get pulled away from that. And uh, things are stolen from us. Uh, the innocence of a child stolen by the, the ways of the world. Identities are stolen. But the Lord doesn't want us to to stay there. He wants us to move into who he's created us to be. Move past uh, the the things that the circumstances, situations that we have found ourselves in that have caused us to maybe lose hope, get disillusioned about uh, the world, the future, everything that's around us. And the Lord brought me back to the life of Paul. If you're not familiar with Paul, uh, he wrote most of the epistles, the letters in the Newer Testament. He was actually a, a persecutor. He was somebody that went after the early Messianic community, the early believers in Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus. And he was at the stoning of one of the most famous martyrs in Scripture, uh, Stephen. Um, he actually witnessed the whole thing, said he agreed with it. And it's really hard to think that a man who had written such great uh, letters in scripture would have been there to see somebody stoned because they were following the Messiah. And it was where and how he got there. You see over the course of his time, we read in actually one of his letters, uh, Philippians, he talks about the fact that he was a Hebrew of Hebrews. 
that uh, he was of the tribe of Benjamin, that he was trained as a Pharisee. Uh, he knew the law inside and out, uh, the Torah. He knew it like the back of his hand, and he was zealous for God. Uh, he would do anything for God, and in fact, he thought he was following the will of God when he was coming after the early believers, when he was, as he puts it, persecuting uh, the people of God uh, because he thought that he was doing the will of God. And how did he get there? Well, he was born into the tribe of Benjamin, as he said, and raised as this Jewish man following the ways of God. But his circumstances, the world, the religious leadership at that time had poured into him a particular point of view about the Messiah or what their expectations of the Messiah was. And that actually blinded him from his true calling, which was to be later revealed when he meets Yeshua on the road to Damascus. And the Lord speaks to him, and basically uh, he believes that the Messiah uh, has come and uh, that he is actually fighting against God and not uh, what his real heart was, which was to pursue God. He traveled away from what the Lord created him and his purpose that he created him to be. The child whose innocence has been stolen really is, uh, we're, we're conditioned to go ahead and accept uh, the way the world is, uh, accept that there's evil in it. We tend to go ahead and accommodate it. Abraham Joshua Heschel said, paraphrasing, uh, that a person who ceases to be surprised dies. He would wake up every day and be surprised that uh, he was alive and that he could enjoy uh, the beautiful day. He's surprised by the, the new sunrise, the, the clouds in the sky. He's always not expecting what's to come next. It's, it's kind of living in wonder and awe of what God is doing. And he says, I don't accommodate evil. I don't allow myself to think of evil as that it's supposed to happen. He even goes on to say, I'm probably the one of the most maladjusted people in society. And his point is, is that he's not going to allow uh, especially evil or the bad things to go ahead and shape or be allowed. He's always going to be surprised by it. And we need to get to that kind of state or it will be easy for our identities to be stolen in growing up and, and in um, losing our innocence, perhaps. Uh, we feel as if we're finding our identity and we feel that we're finding who we are. We're either defining ourselves by our work, our job, uh, what we, um, our hobby, um, perhaps a relationship we're in, uh, the ministry we're involved. You define yourself by those things. And what would happen, uh, you know, just using the identity theft, if you're finding your worth in that, uh, when that goes ahead and starts to dissolve, uh, when it's removed, uh, if a relationship is broken, if you lose your job, uh, if your credit is uh, ruined, if your identity was found in that, uh, it can also, it, it, it could be a point of being lost, uh, hopelessness. Um, or we should expect that everybody should lose their uh, identities. Well, we shouldn't expect that. And we should uh, not accept it the same way we shouldn't accept things that aren't truth in this world. We need to return to a place uh, like that child of an innocent state being surprised of uh, the good things and in awe of the good things, um, but not accommodating the evil things. So this whole teaching really came as a surprise to me as to wanting to share with you um, with this identity theft. Uh, generally, as the Lord engages me, he uh, teaches me uh, something about what I'm going to teach. Um, so it was heavy on my heart to talk to you about our identities and the freedom I actually found in knowing that uh, I was a son of the Lord, that I, I really am in a place of security, uh, that no matter what is happening around me, I could um, 
you know, be have bought a house and not even know about it. But to be able to walk through that and not allow it to uh, rob me of what I see in people, uh, what I understand about people. The world brings us uh, along uh, so many different paths and it shapes us uh, into so many different things. And it's how we then respond to what the world has done to us that can determine uh, where we land. And at the heart of what uh, I think uh, Heschel is trying to explain is that we don't allow the evil things of this world to be the determining factor of who we are. I didn't, didn't know Paul personally, but you can see how his life was uh, formed, how he grew up in the religious elite. He allowed that world to uh, transform him, and he, he became uh, the man that he was that persecuted the early community. Um, and it wasn't until he was set free with the truth of what God really created him to be, both as uh, a newborn baby, a child, back to that innocence, uh, also to his specific calling. And um, that's what the Lord has for us. He, he has the desire for us to trust in him as our Heavenly Father, allowing us to be the innocent child in awe and wonder of what our daddy's doing, and also grow in the true calling and position that he's placed us in, whatever the Lord has specifically for you. Um, the freedom comes and the trust and the innocent comes when we just place it back with the Lord, return to that place where we haven't allowed the world to uh, steal, haven't allowed the world to callousize or harden our hearts. Um, we can't accommodate uh, the evils of this world and allow those things to determine who we are. We have to know who we are as his children, as created in innocence, live in that joy, that release, that freedom. And when you do, that peace will come. Anxiety will flee. Fear will be gone. And you can arrive to exactly where I did. Not saying I have everything perfect or um, there was anxiety when it first came out. I'm like, oh, seriously? And then prayed about it, and I know the Lord heard me, and I knew everything was going to be okay. That identity isn't in my social security number. That identity isn't in what I can leverage with the bank. My identity is in Him as this child who can see the wonders of this creation. My identity is in Him and what He's called me to be. And so I encourage you today to find that place of innocence where you can just release yourself to see the beauty and the wonder in what God's created, and then seek Him as to what He has in store for you. And along that way, you're probably going to find out that there are things that uh, the world has uh, calcified in you, uh, hardened your heart, um, perhaps uh, had you to find your identity, not where it's supposed to be. And that's okay, because when you're faced with truth, like Paul, you know, he got knocked on his butt. You might get knocked on your butt for a second, but then you get back up, the Lord restores you and then gets you on the right path seek him to see what perhaps you're allowing the world to define you as and not actually what the Lord has for you. And it's personal for each of us. So as we part today, I hope you don't misunderstand uh, me trying to downplay uh, perhaps things that happen in our lives, circumstances uh, that do uh, influence us and have ramifications for uh, our futures. I want us to understand that in those circumstances, in the world that we live in, yes, there's evil, but we're not going to allow it to uh, define us. We're rather going to move forward and allow the Lord to define us. And it's not just to brush things aside. It's really to, to trust in Him. Because when you trust in Him and you place everything at His feet, uh, truly, truly, I tell you, uh, that peace that surpasses all understanding will come. He will even guard your mind from the anxious thoughts 
uh, and you'll, you'll see a transformation in your life uh, that's quite wonderful. I want to thank everyone who has been watching uh, for your support. Uh, it's been really great. I appreciate that uh, you showed up to the end here and allowed me to share a little bit with you about uh, my feelings of what just happened to me, some of the insights that uh, the Lord had laid on my heart. I appreciate that. I enjoyed our time, and I hope you have a wonderful day.